Welcome to Community Board 8 Speaks. I'm Scott Falk, first vice chair of the board and co-chair of the Transportation Committee. And I'm here with Barry Schneider, a longtime member of the board and co-chair of the Second Avenue Subway Task Force. Barry. Hello there. The number one question on everybody's mind right now is, will the Second Avenue Subway open by the end of this year? Yes. 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 So when do you expect them to launch service? Sometime before midnight on December 31st. I can't give you the date and time, and as soon as I have it, I will share it with you and the world. But as recently as Tuesday of this week, uh, the chairman of the MTA reinforced the idea that the subway is progressing on time and shall open on time for revenue service before the end of December. Okay. Well, let's back up and actually talk about where the idea for the Second Avenue subway came from. Well, the idea was germinated actually in 1929. The first plans for the Second Avenue subway were, were, were launched then. And then, of course, the Depression came and that wiped out any going forward on the Second Avenue subway. And then there was a thing called World War II, which in, 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 interfered with any plans. And by the time recovery came, it was probably in the late 60s, early 70s, that the Second Avenue subway blossomed again under, under Mayor Koch. And actually, sections, sections of the subway were built here on the Upper East Side in the low hundreds. So there are tunnels that exist today that were built in the 70s. But again, the, the fiscal crisis of the 70s intervened and work was suspended. Uh, it wasn't until the mid-1990s that we, the city took another hard look at the infrastructure and the transportation issues on the Upper East Side. On, on the east side, and then throughout Manhattan, indeed. It was called the Mesa Study, around 1995 and 96, which looked at ways of, of building a line to carry tra tra pedestrian, uh, uh, traffic from the Upper East Side to the rest of the city. Um, one, of the, one of the plans was for a light rail. That was a wonderful idea, championed by many, many people, except that there's one major problem. Light rail doesn't carry enough people to make it pay, to make it work. So the results at the end of the 1990s, beginning of 2002, uh, the MTA devised a program that would build a line from 125th Street south to Manha Hanover Square. And that was the beginning of the current iteration of the Second Avenue subway. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question that's not about the Upper East Side. Where is Hanover Square? The, the tip of Manhattan the bottom of Manhattan, and uh, that will t link into all services that go to Brooklyn, and it's, it's a natural transportation hub, and uh, that's where it's going to wind up. Okay. So this project, is this connected to the East Side Access project, or is that something different? That's totally separate and apart. The East Side Access is the plan by the MTA to bring the Long Island Railroad to Grand Central. Right now, as you know, it goes only to uh, the Penn Station on the west side. And the plan is to bring the trains from Long Island into Grand Central. It'll be a, it'll be a great achievement and a great boon to the, the tra traffic and travelers throughout the district. What are they building in this project? This is a, a two-line subway, a north and a southbound. The, as I say, it goes from 125th Street to the to Hanover, Hanover Square, the tip of Manhattan. Currently, the, what we're looking at now is called Phase One, which is from 96th to 86th, 72nd, and 63rd and 3rd. And then that will tie in to the existing Q line. And so the next stop after 63rd Street is 57th and 7th, and then Times Square, Union Square, and south. And if you have the persistence, you can sit in your, in, in your seat on that train that you get on at 96th Street and get over Coney Island. That's the last stop on the line. That's going to be called the Q line. When the full build is actualized, realized, imagined, it'll go from 125th to uh, Hanover Square. It's called, that'll call the T line. But now phase one is the Q line. Okay. So do you know when they're going to take the Q line away from uh, 59th and Lexington Avenue? Do not know. Okay. I hear they're bringing back the W train. That's what I've heard, yeah. I was a fan of the W train. Oh, well. Then again, I get on it, 59th and Lex, a lot. When did the, when did the construction really get moving on the um, three and a half, four new stops um, for the Q train? It began in 2007 when the tunnel boring machine 
was loaded into the station at 96th Street, seven stories below grade, this huge monster cutting device that ran from 96th and, and 2nd to 63rd and 3rd, actually 63rd and Lex, uh, where the, the uh, F line is. It, it, it parallels the, the F line at 63rd Street. Once it got finished at 63rd, they pulled it back out, put it back in the ground, and, and bored the other tunnel, which we have two, two parallel tunnels, northbound and southbound. Is the F still going to stop at 63rd and yep. Lex? Yeah, it doesn't affect the F line. They either say they're on parallel tracks, so you can get off on the, the uh, Q and get onto the F or vice versa. Very convenient. Yes. What has been the impact on the residents and the businesses in the neighborhood since it, 2007? It's been significant. It, it's been enormous. Uh, it's been deleterious. Uh, the, the residents were, were impacted by large, noisy construction vehicles outside their windows. Uh, there was some, at one point there was a dust issue. Uh, there's always a noise issue when you're when you're drilling. The, the tunnel boring machine, by the way, as I say, took place seven grade, seven floors below grade. So that no one's even aware of it. But as soon as they had to start building the shafts for the stations at 72nd, 86th, and 96th, that's when the noise, the traffic disruptions, the dust in the air, uh, all occurred. The dust was addressed very, very promptly by MTA. They put sensors at all these locations, and the, the ambient uh, temperature was the amb ambient um, uh, smoke and other particles was below normal when they got their act together and they put in the scrubbers and the other devices to keep the dust down. And that was the residence. Uh, that is still going on today because if, as you as you walk the uh, alignment, you'll see that there's still an awful lot of work being done above grade and below grade uh, to to finish the, to put the finishes on the on the subway entrances as well as the ancillary facilities which handle the uh, air, fire, emergency exits, and things like that. You mentioned the ancillary structures, so um, I think I read that they're using uh, these structures instead of. Um, Sidewalk grates. Oh yes, um, yes. To sundry. So, how do you know how they work, or what? Not, not what really. They I, do? I, I, in the event of a fire in the in the subway, uh, these uh, these towers will suck out the air, uh, the the smoke, and will bring in fresh air. Uh, they also emergency exits uh, in, in some of the ancillary facilities, but it's, it's essentially it's an air handling uh, operation. And they're, for the most part, they're quiet, but, but if the fans have to operate on an emergency basis, the neighbors will be aware of it. Uh, speaking of exiting, so um, if the tunnels are seven floors below the surface, how do you get into these stations? What's, what's the way people are going to get down Ele to the train? I'm sorry. Elevators, escalators, and stairs. There's a redundant number of, of uh, escalators. I'm, I'm thinking particularly at, at 72nd on the southeast corner. Uh, there are four escalators. I believe there are two or three elevators and a stairway. Uh, that's just at that one exit. The, each subway has at least two and perhaps three exits uh, for people to in, enter and, and, and uh, leave the, the stations. The northernmost station is at 96th yes. Street, right? Do you know what um, other street besides 96th Street will have an entryway to that station? I'm not certain, uh, okay. Scott. Uh, probably. Um, is it something like 93rd or 94th? I think. I'm not sure. Well, I, won't, I, won't, I won't pin you down. This was, this was a pop quiz. And then the next station below that is 86th 86. Street. And then 72nd and then 63rd. It, you can enter 63rd at 3rd Avenue or at Lexington Avenue. And in fact, the uh, community is asking the MTA to open that entrance at 63rd Street before the revenue service begins in December so that they can get, in the event of inclement weather, they can get to Lexington Avenue underground at, that 60, at 63rd and 3rd. We're waiting to hear an answer on that. Uh, uh, you, let me interrupt you. You asked before the impact on the residents. I, I kind of gave you a, a global overview. No. Not, I didn't go detail. But the impact on the merchants has been significant. Uh, there were a number of, of businesses went out of business because it was difficult for their per patrons to come to their stop shops. Certainly, the, the parking regulations would change dramatically along 2nd Avenue from uh, 67th Street to 98th Street. So people couldn't drive up to their favorite restaurant or clothing store or uh, 
florist. So that's been a, that has been a big impact. However, a study was done several years ago of the number of vacancies in First Avenue, Second Avenue, Third Avenue. And there were more vacancies on First Avenue than there were on Second Avenue, commercial vacancies. Uh, so we, well, we had the downturn in 08 just a year before, after this project began in earnest. So, so the, the economy turned bad and the impact of the Second Avenue subway didn't help at all. And uh, a lot of pet places went out of business. The bright light is, in the last year or maybe 18 months, this has turned around. More and more stores are coming into the area on Second Avenue. There are more buildings being built. There's a high rise on 72nd and 1st called the Charles. It's probably the most expensive real estate square foot for square foot on the Upper East Side. And that was built in anticipation of the Second Avenue subway being an, an entrance at 72nd and, and Second, and this building at 72nd and 1st. And we've seen that up and down the alignment. Business, business are coming in. Buildings are being built. Uh, the real estate is, is, is thriving now in this general area because of the Second Avenue subway. We didn't mention that what the Second Avenue subway will mean to the average rider. If you're on the Lexington Avenue line these days, you know how overcrowded it is, 118 percent perhaps. Uh, with, the, with the opening of the Second Avenue subway in December of this year, I say December of this year, uh, 200,000 people a day will use that train. And they will take off a considerable number from the Lex line. So the Lex line will feel the positive impact of the Second Avenue subway. I watched an episode of CB8 Speaks from several years ago when they were um, bringing out the tunnel boring machine and starting to actually dig out those tunnels. And I think I remember you saying that in 1929 they thought the Lexington Avenue line was getting a little overcrowded, <laughs> and that was one of the reasons that they might need an additional line well, on Second Avenue. Well, they, they, had a, they had a century of foresight, because now in 2016 we'll have that Second Avenue subway, which will relieve the overcrowding to a, new, to a degree on the Lex line. Again, the city's growing by leaps and bounds. We're now at 8.6 million people, I believe. And the use of public transportation, particularly the subway, is exploding. It, it's it's haven't seen anything like this since World War II. Who do you think we can thank for getting this project really moving forward? It seems like it took them, you know, uh, more than 75 years to get from uh, the idea picking up steam to the um, steam shovels actually coming right. out, as it were. The decision was made at the highest level at, at the uh, state level because the MTA is a state agency. Uh, but this doesn't happen unless you've got funding, and funding was critical. And the, the in, one individual who was outstanding in the very beginning and has continued her support to this moment is, is Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Carolyn has been an outstanding champion for the Second Avenue subway since it, it got started somewhere in the, in the mid to late 90s, when I mentioned the Mesa study. Carolyn has been out in the forefront of, uh, in Congress, getting the federal funds, seeing that this, this project received top priority uh, as a, as a uh, civil engineering project, which put to, put to work 19,000 people a day was working on this project in, in, in its heyday. Uh, that's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, jobs, and Carolyn brought a lot of cash from Washington to make this thing happen. And we all have a great deal of thanks and a debt of, of gratitude to Carolyn for her outstanding leadership in this area. Well, I appreciate your sharing that. Can you tell me uh, what led the community board to start a special task force um, for the Second Avenue subway construction? Uh, because the Second Avenue subway involves uh, not only just transportation, but it impacts the city, the, the, the community in, in, in many ways. Uh, sanitation pr becomes a problem. There's a, there have been a problem with rat infestation. Uh, when the, the uh, merchants who put out their garbage, their trash at the end of the day, may not secure it properly in a different location, and that has led to a growth of the rat population. So we had to deal with sanitation. Uh, the air, the air quality was an issue. That's an environment issue. Well, you can't have an environment committee and a sanitation committee and a transportation committee all trying to solve these problems as they come about. 
uh, it would become a, a, a management nightmare. So the community board decided to put all these concerns in one basket and, and deliver them to the Second Avenue Subway Task Force, which I'm, I'm delighted to have been co-chair for so many, many years. Which agency has been building the subway? Which uh, is, is it the MTA? Is it New York City Transit? No. Are, is it the people who are going to run the trains? No. no, good question. The construction of the Second Avenue subway is under the, uh, under the umbrella of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority Construction Company, M M MTACC, and they're the ones who let the contracts to the contractors who actually do the work. Uh, there are very many. Co there, are, I think. I think there were six major contracts to build this subway, and uh, uh, various contractors bid on the contract, and then were, were awarded the contract. So it, it it all fell under the MTA CC. When revenue service begins, it's turned over to the New York City Transit Authority, and the MTA steps back. Okay. Well. We're looking forward to that day coming up very soon. It should be a happy new year. As we tape this, I think that's uh, roughly 100, uh, 110 days away, yeah. um, New Year's Eve. Um, so what do you think the impact will be um, once they actually launch service um, at these new queue stations? Well, I, I know the, that they're going to have 200,000 people a day using the service. So that's good. Um, the, the, the one of the uh, impacts of the construction was the tearing apart of Second Avenue, and part of the contract that the MTA has with the community, if you will, is to restore Second Avenue to the way it was before and better. So if you, if you go walk Second Avenue now, you'll find that the sidewalks, in many cases, have been replaced. The, the roadbeds have been re, retarred and, re, and repaved. Um, There'll be new light fixtures coming in, LED fixtures, the new the city standard, uh, which can be tuned, fine-tuned. They can be focused so that the, the glare of the LED light does not enter people's apartments. Uh, there'll be benches. There'll be bike racks. There'll be trees and tree guards. The Department of Parks and Recreation has a, a, a plan to replace all the trees that were taken down. There's something like 200... Uh, some odd trees taken down, they'll be replaced by a thousand trees. And whenever the MTA puts, a, I'm sorry, when the Parks Department puts a new tree in, they'll put a new tree bed in and a larger tree bed to catch more water and a delightful little tree enclosure to protect the tree. So it's good that Second Avenue is going to have a rebirth from 59th to 96th within the confines of the Community District 8. Speaking of the confines of Community District 8, it's probably worth mentioning what that district is. Um, Community District 8 is one of 59 districts in the city. There are 12 in Manhattan, and uh, Community District 8, which Community Board 8 um, handles, represents the area from Fifth Avenue east to the river uh, from 59th Street north to 96th Street, as well as Roosevelt Island. Right. Also served by the F train. <laughs> So how would you sum up your experience um, dealing with this project in the last 19 or 20 years? It's great now. <laughs> uh, early on, it was, it was a challenge. The, the community was rightfully con up, uh, upset about the intrusion into their, into their homes. Um, there was a great impact, as I mentioned earlier, with the noise, with some dust in the very beginning. Uh, with just the inconvenience, your, your, your normal street crossings changed to accommodate the, the, the building of the subway. Uh, I think now we, we're going to see a, a whole new uh, approach to the, to the problem. At our meetings, we would get in early days 100, 125 people, and the meetings would last three or four hours because there were a lot of things that had, had to be addressed. Now our meetings are maybe an hour, an hour and a half. We have generally more people representing the MTA than are from the general public. But people now have, have a very positive outlook toward the opening of the, of the subway, and I'm delighted to see that happen. There was a turning point about five years ago in the culture of the MTA. Uh, the MTA was not the most friendly agency to deal with. Uh, there are, there's a huge organization, the monolith, uh, and they, didn't, they came into the community to do their job, but they didn't come into the community to become a part of the community. And I sat down with Michael Rodachano, 
who was the president of the M MTACC, and said, you've got to make some change in the way you approach this problem. You've got to engage the community. You can't just sit in the corner and cover your eyes and think that nothing's happening around you. You've got to reach out and, and become part of the community. And, and they listened, and they did. Uh, they began having quarter, uh, quarterly roundtable meetings, public forums for, um, for all the concerned stakeholders. At, 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 these, at these meetings, they would have tables set up for the 63rd Street Station, the 72nd Street Station, the 86th and 96th Street Station. And at those tables were facilitators and representatives of the contractor, so that the members of the community could in, interact on a one-to-one -one basis with the people who were actually doing the work that they were being affected by. And that changed everything. They had quarterly or more frequent meetings of the stakeholders in each of those four locations, in, in the, in, right in their area. They didn't have to go half a block away. They didn't have to go across town to, to a meeting. The meeting was right within their community. And so the, the uh, people at MTA became a part of the solution rather than being part of the problem. And I think that made a huge difference in the way that the public perceived this project to, to be. Okay. I know that um, back when they built the original subway lines, um, there were a lot of um, casualties, a lot of people um, killed or injured along the way you know, as they put that in. Um, I don't think I've heard a lot of reports of um, similar casualties on this project. You haven't heard the reports because they don't exist. I, I asked to take a look at the um, accident record about two years ago, and it was clean. But I think about it within the last two years, I think there was one injury where a worker broke a leg, but nothing more serious than that. And of course, the, the fellow healed and he's back to work. Uh, the, we, got, we have OSHA to thank for that. We have the diligence of the contractors to be sure that they're, they're, they're people work in a safe environment and that the MTA provided the funding to make the environment safe in, in, as they go about their daily tasks. Early on, this was a 24-hour day operation because it was mostly below grade at that time. So that they had, uh, as I say, 19,000 workers on the on the project from 63rd to 96th, and uh, to say to say that there were no, no fatalities and no major injuries, I think, a great accomplishment and a, a testament to where we are today in our dealing with these kinds of problems. So, what lessons do you think we can take away from the experience with this project for how to approach the next big thing um, when somebody comes up with another idea to? Um, do a, a big project to transform the neighborhood? Well, I don't think there'll be another project that will m mirror the Second Avenue subway in this area. It's a $4.5 billion project. It took nine years to accomplish. It disrupted hundreds of thousands of lives, perhaps. Um, but what we did, did learn is, again, I think, be, be open, be above board, be accessible, work with the community, don't don't <clears throat> come in as as a conquering hero, but come in as a, as a co-equal to solve a problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think I think the MTA has learned that. I think the city has learned that, um, and I think the the elected officials now know how these kinds of things happen, and I think they can support the next one, which will be phase two, which is is in planning stage right now, and that's from 96 to 125th Street, and that will probably take as long as this project did. It won't be cut and it'll be cut and cover for the most part. It will not be the, the, a tunnel boring machine. So it'll be there'll be disruptions in the community. But again, I think the MTA has learned how to deal with it rather than to turn its back on it. So when you say that you think the phase two will take as long, I'm assuming you don't mean, you know, uh, from 1929 to 2016. No, 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 no. About 10 years <clears throat> about of 10 construction. Years so, yeah, and I think we saw the clock. Now, because I know the MTA has put together a, t a, t a team to do the preliminary uh, uh, examinations and studies, so that, that's that's uh, that's beginning now. The it has been funded by the state. So I think a million and a half dollars was started for the preliminary work. So I have every confidence that phase two will be here. And will phase two also be the Q train? I don't know that answer. I would think so. It's going to be an okay. extension of what we have now. Okay. Um, do you know where phase three um, would go? Yes, sure. Hanover Square. You remember that Hanover Square? Uh, to, to 14th Street. And then phase four, which will lock up the whole project from 14th to, to uh, 63rd Street. Okay, great. 
If there is um, one thing that you would um, like to see happen between now and December, any, anything uh, do you... I'd like to see the ribbon cutting happen in 10 days. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to see the ribbon cutting sooner than later. Uh, if everyone's going to be busy on New Year's Eve, I don't think that's a time to do this. I would do it. But perhaps maybe the, the MTA's Christmas gift to the Upper East Side would be to cut the ribbon on New Year's Eve, on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And and Mike Ron and China can play Santa Claus. Let's see, maybe if we can get them to cut the ribbon on 63rd and 3rd for Thanksgiving. Okay. That would well, be very uh, exciting. Well, I could give thanks for riding down that escalator. When I ride up, Third Avenue or walk up Third Avenue past that station and I can see the clock you know I see the message boards through the window by the escalator oh. on the southeast corner of 63rd and 3rd and I think okay I see the current time I see the current date so something's working at this station and I want to be able to swipe my metro card there right. thank you very much for joining us to talk about um, this project uh, clearly it's had a long history. You've had a long history with this project, but not nearly as long <laughs> as the project itself. Uh, and I very much look forward to riding the queue with you. I uh, shall. Maybe we can make plans to, to ride down that escalator at 63rd Street. We'll do it together. All right. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, uh, please be sure to go to the Community Board 8 website at www.cb. 8m, like Manhattan, dot com, so you can sign up for our email list so that when we actually have news about the launch of the Second Avenue subway, um, you'll be able to get that email blast from us and find out when you can join us on the Q train. Thanks.